so good morning to everyone and so today we are going to discuss about elasticity and what are the relations used in structural mechanics for uh, stress analysis and uh, also in fea uh, part of it so before moving to the further we will just uh, provide in a simple recap what we have done till the date and uh, we'll move to the next part of it so we have seen in a procedure for fem fea procedure is the first part we have seen in this procedure we have uh, formulated uh, two parts one is bar element we have seen and also spring element both the things we have discussed and after that we have solved few examples solved uh, examples on spring uh, both the examples spring and uh, these things so today we are going to discuss about first point force deflection curve or i can say uh, force deflection or stress strain curve stress and what is meant by strain curve of the typical material and what does that stress means that we are going to discuss in details second we are going to also discuss about uh, 3d a uh, 2d stresses into this what is meant by 2d stress maybe a plane stress and plane strain and uh, after that we are going to discuss about uh transformation techniques which we have just revised we are this is nothing but a revision part we are going to do about strength of material that is a transformation i, I can say it is in a principal stresses and principal planes this part also we are going to discuss and uh, maybe if we got enough sufficient time we'll just discuss about uh, theories of failures and so this will be in a uh, Uh, basically a uh, typical background we are going to uh, create for structural analysis part of it. then so basically what does that deflection means and what uh, what the relation for stress and strain so uh, i will take in a simple block here uh, this is my a uh, typical block i am going to apply the force on one end and i am going to fix it at the end so this is fixed part and and this block or bar is having a area a having an length l and we want to now this is what an it is mounted into the utm just imagine this is what an sample we are going to test it and we want to know if i am going to increase the force what will be the deflection it is going to happen so obviously in utm we used to conduct a test gradually increasing test or something gradually increasing force this is a deflection this is a force so we are going to have an some points this is what the way we can have an force deflection curve we can determine in this case we are going to as we go on increasing the force what is going to happen it is following certain line this is what an typical line it will follow after certain amount of deflection at an a particular point this is what an a, a elastic limit we call okay and uh, still if we increase more force it will not follow the line but it is now we getting in a deviated from the line and it is going to somewhere fail at particular stress value or particular amount of deformation this is what an a failure point i can say and this is what an a, a maximum amount of force it can sustain this is i can say it is in a maximum amount of force uh, practically uh, we can't measure in a stress so this is basically uh, i would like to say it here so for that purpose and uh, this what we are doing we are going to mount here a uh, force sensor maybe an a strain gauge sensor this is what an a force sensor or load sensor normally it is called and then there is an extensometer we typically apply onto this which is going to determine a uh, deflection of it and so that way so this extensometer is typically mounted here there will be a some slider or something 
and that is uh, it is going to give me a deflection at uh, different load values so we are going to have a one display for core sensor another display for your uh, extensometer and these values as we are going to increase the load onto this this load may be a something w here as we are going to increase the load so you will get this particular curve so this curve is typically dip, uh, for particular area this is my area and this is my length and this is my particular material is a uh, milestone okay in this case ultimately what you want to do is so we want to determine a material property not in a geometric property which we know it so in this material property if you want to extract it so what are this area and this l should be removed from this particular curve so that is what it is a process card is in a normalization or something we are going to do it so in this case so we want to now know the unit value of the force coming onto this that is what we called as in a stress unit volume is this is my area i am going to apply the force onto this and uh, i want to know how much amount of force at particular unit value unit uh, unit area onto this and unit length onto this unit length unit length may be in a 1 mm will be in one unit or 1 meter will be in one unit or maybe anything that is what uh, the uh, uh, that is what um, consistency of unit we need to maintain into this so for that purpose if you want to remove why we have to do it that is what is uh, most important if i increase the area to the no somewhere a even so my curve will not be in a, this 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 may be a curve for an area a a and this is my l so as i am going to increase the area what is going to happen this curve will now follow this particular graph so sorry this is for in a lower area this is what in a lower value of the area so this curve will be following this particular path if i increase the area the curve will be in a something in this fashion it will follow this is what in a, i can say it is in a a2 this is for a1 likewise i will get in a huge amount of curves into this so which one is to be followed because if i am i am going to uh, decide uh, any diameter or any area so which curve i have to do and all the time we need to conduct an a test for it and that is what we need to remove dependency remove the dependency of dependency of my geometric property geometric property geometric geometric property we need to remove it from this so obviously uh, so if i divide by area and here and if i am going to divide by l here so these are the two geometric property associated with this bar so these two properties we are going to remove by converting force upon area so that is what we called as in a stress in practically this is what uh, this is the stress you can't measure it so there is no unit uh, unit or instru uh, instrument which will uh, measure the stress directly but we are all the time measuring the force dividing by the amount of area we will get the stress because uh, when i say a stress as in a unit i can have a unit of 1 mm also maybe 1 micron also maybe 1 meter also so that is what a unit uh, area and that is that becomes in a difficult so that's what force coming on force divided by area will result into stress and strain is nothing but a deflection divided by area so what is going to happen so instead of having so many curves into this instead of having so many curves into this what we are doing we will get only one single curve that is what it is called for, for particular material so i can have a strain here then stress here i'll get only one single curve and that curve is called as in a stress strain curve that is what the basically uh, re stress strain curve i can have it and that stress strain curve will represent only material property that is what uh, uh, advantage of it that's the reason we most of the time we go for uh, stress strain curve not on a force deflection curve. material property
so when we are going to deal with this this is what the way we have first of all we are going to measure the deformation then we are going to determine a, a stress strain uh, converting that force deflection curve into a stress strain curve so that is what the step we are going to follow so when we are dealing with an, a stress strain curve uh, so when we are dealing with a stress strain curve you can just observe one thing this is my uh, stress axis and this is my strain axis so this is stress now we got an only one single curve and it is now showing this type of behavior so this type of behavior so here there will be a multiple points you can observe so where you, it, this curve is going to get deviated because ultimately behavior is represented into a single equation it should be represented with a single equation so you observe it this is what the point where it it is not in, it is up to this point it is following the straight line and that is what it is called as in a proportional limit this proportional limit means proportional limit means during this range during this particular range my stress is directly proportional to strain and that is what we called as in a hooke's law this is what a hooke's law this hooke's law represents stress equal to e into epsilon e is nothing but in a slope of my particular uh, that stress strain curve means if i take a slope of this i'll get the value of the e here that is uh, the thing it is going to happen and if i move beyond this particular point and maybe reaching to the yield point or upper yield point lower yield point or something so this e value is continuously changing if you zoom this part so your curve is this is my proportional limit so this curve is going to change in this fashion and it is going to fail like this if i go on determining tangent of it this tangent is nothing but a slope initially i will get an e g0 then my tangent is going to e1 then e2 like this so that is what it happens and this is now up to this you will have only single e value and uh, beyond this particular point you will get in multiple e values so whenever the material property is to be defined so it is defined in one table so that is e and strain if i have only one single e value my behavior is up to this proportional limit up to this point only if i am going to have on a multiple e values maybe in e0 with epsilon 0 even with epsilon 1 so this indicates this is what in a non linear behavior this is what in a non linear and this is what in this particular zone is called as in a non linear and this is what it is a linear zone so when we are going to deal with this uh, two differently when we are dealing with in a non linear then you need to use in a numerical techniques to take care of it ultimately you need to fit this curve on stress strain curve and you need to this is what in a proportional limit then this is what it is uh, fitted with in a uh, stress is equal to epsilon 0 maybe in a epsilon e1 into epsilon likewise you can have on a multiple elements into this maybe and this is what in a simple polynomial i am going to tell you to fit it but in actual practice this simple polynomial will not be much more uh, representing complete behavior of your stress and diagram so this is what it is going to happen only in one direction we are not assumed in another direction so so that is basically it happens this is what in a conversion of force deflection curve into stress strain curve so this is what in a step one step you can just observe so when we are looking for in a stress and strain before moving to the stress and strain what i would like to tell you one important thing just look at this side whenever you are going to apply the force whenever you are going to apply this is my bar and i am going to apply the force on one end i am fixing it here so this is under an axial force this is what an axis and uh, in that particular axis you are going to apply the force so this is going to either creating an a deflection that is what i can have on a tensile tensile deflection and if i am going to reverse this force 
what will happen it will come come to be a compression so whenever we are going to be in a deformation or deformation maybe in a deflection or compression so that is what it is called as in a contraction or dilation for this so this is going to result into the change in the volume of it that is what it happens means just look you can just look this animation how this is going to happen if i am going to apply the force in two two three directions so this is what it is going to happen this so if i am going to apply the force on uh, all the directions that is the x and y direction so it is going to expand it and that is what it is going to generate an force if i am going to apply the force in one direction here okay and the other direction opposite to it so it is going to compress on one x axis and uh, expanding in another direction so same way here also you can observe this is what it is uh, dilation or change in the volume you can offer it so if i am going to have in a block like this and it is now fixed it here and i am going to force it applying this is my axis and i am going to apply the force perpendicular to axis that is what it is called as in a tangential force so this tangential force will result into change in the shape of this and that shape is represented is uh, with phi or something so this angle of change and that is what it is called as in a shearing whenever the force is perpendicular to the what are the amount of axis axis that is what it is called as in a shape change in this case only shape is going to change but volume is remaining to be in a same volume doesn't change that is uh, unchange is going to happen so this is what and it is going to happen in contraction or dilation or deformation then there is an shear and third most important is in a rigid body translation in this rigid body translation what is going to happen i i may be going to change the orientation of it i am going to have in a translation of it like this but dimension of this particular block is not going to change at all that geometry is remaining same and uh, only the position of that particular geometry or uh, is going to change that is what it is called as an rigid body translation or rotation kind of things you can do it so this is what it is going to happen at and uh, after that you can just look look at it how it is going to happen so in first point stress can exist exit without strain also uh, what does that means without strain stress can exit without strain heating the body between the rigid wall means i am having an uh, strain means what this is my body i am going to apply the force on both the end uh, displacement onto this i am going to increase the temperature so as i am going to increase the temperature what will happen so it is going to expand it from all the side so this is also fixed it here from all the side so as it is going to expand it we are going to provide a restriction for this expansion and uh, it is going to generate an uh, opposition for it and that is what we call as in a stress and this stress is whenever you are going to apply the force it is any change is not going to happen it is no deformation is going to happen what is the definition for def uh, strain strain is nothing but an delta upon n and, and uh, so this is this is zero so that's what it is no strain is existing to this this may be in a case so what we are asking here is to come first way we can do it yeah anybody is having any question into this yeah so we will now look at what does that stress and strain means whenever we for Hello, apply the force or displacement and onto this the most appropriate variables that one talks about is point mass and rigid bodies in sitting in the outside of the body that is what it happens and this is what it is going to uh, clear the things and uh, moving to the further what i will do i will just increase i will just provide you know, one more uh, concept onto this so basically when we are going to apply the force on particular body and we mostly applying the forces in one dimensional we are not uh, one not two dimensional so if i am going to apply the force and this is my particular component so this force is this is what and i can say fy this is my fx 
so obviously this force is going to change the dimension means this particular area is going to change it or our stresses are going to generate into this so if you consider only simple case this is my uh, axial member i will consider this is what an uh, area onto this so stress coming onto this particular point is a axial direction so as you are going to apply the force onto this so this is fixed on one end like this so as i am going to change the orientation i am keeping this force and all the uh, constraint and everything same i am going to change the orientation of this i will now see what will be the stress value in this particular area so that area will increase and then obviously if i am going to look at horizontal plane there will be no only one direction stress there will not be any tangential force acting on to this there is no tangential force acting on it so obviously that type of stress is called as an a normal stress there is no tangential force acting on this particular if my angle of rotation is theta is equal to 0 something if i orient it in this fashion okay so this is my horizontal axis and this is my angle and this angle i will say it is in a theta maybe in a 45 or something so in this particular angle what is going to happen the force will be in a all the time what are the forces acting in this direction that force will get resolved into two component one is in normal direction that we can call as an fn or i will say it is in a force normal force another force is in direction to the orientation that is what i can say it is in a tangential force and that tangential force is causing in a shear stress so that shear stress may be according to call as an a ty txy something so th as i am going to again rotate this angle what is going to happen this shear stress is goes on again increasing decreasing like this so similarly if i do one thing into this i will now have an a theta is equal to zero a theta and uh, i will uh, plot in a normal force or normal stress on to one axis if i apply an 100 newton force here okay 100 newton force on to this so initially my force will be in a very high this is what it is going to happen so this will be this particular normal force is now this fn is now divided into two component one is tangential component and another is a normal component so obviously that uh, value goes on decreasing and somewhere at exactly if i take in a vertical plane like this if i take in a complete vertical plane that is what i can say it is a 90 degree uh, i will get in a zero normal stress again it as i am going to rotate it further like this so this normal stress goes on increasing and then again this is what the way it varies and uh, somewhere at particular plane you can find my stress value is maximum this is what it is going to happen so similarly now i can plot tau xy also in tau xy i can have an uh, it initially it was zero then it will increase mm -hmm. it will increase to the maximum it will reach to the maximum and then it will come back means whenever my stress normal stress is zero my maximum shear stress becomes maximum this is what it is going to happen at maximum that is what it is uh, happening the reason for that they are going to exchange or they are going converting into components that is uh, that's the reason it is going to happen it so that is the way we can now identify somewhere there will be a plane into my particular component so this this is my particular plane i will take on a chalk you might have observed one thing uh, if i am going to apply the twisting moment for this or i am going to twist it so it is going to fail at particular angle it will not fail at an horizontal one because so this is what it is a brittle material and this is going to fail because of the shear stress not with the uh, uh, normal stress and that is the reason uh, we can uh, determine if my maximum shear stress is going to happen what will happen means which plane on which plane it is maximum uh, and which plane it is in a minimum that is what uh, we can do it so to do this analysis we will just uh, uh, simply will go ahead with the one 
uh, one step into this and uh, okay so basically i'll just move on to because this is you know it you can just go through this ppts you will come to know what is to be done so this is what in a stress transformation it is going to happen if i apply x direction stress y direction stress this is x and this is y shear stress also it is applied and this equation you will get in stress on that particular plane in x direction normal stress you will get this one in shear stress you will get this direction this force and this is what in for y direction stress so this you know, equations are depends on angle theta and this angle theta as we are going to rotate it so it will produce some graphs and that is what it is got as in a stress transformation and that stress transformation you can just look at few of the examples so now i can recollect and uh, uh, i can write these three equations this is for x direction this is for y direction this is for x y c stresses in this case if you look into this uh, a first case where the uh, only axial force is applied the way we uh, test it into um, unit, that is utm you know, that is what in a testing we do it in this case this is my axial force we have or axial stress it is applied and this this particular particular block is a rotated so initially it is at this then you are going to rotate it like this and i am going to study how much amount of stress in this direction and then again i am going to rotate like this then i am going to rotate in this another direction like this i am going to rotate i am going going to determine the stress values by those relations which we shown it so in this relation you can just observe three different stresses this is my x direction stress this is my x y direction stress and this is my shear stress and this is nothing but a sum of both the things so if you look into the green color line this is what initially because it is x direction stress you applied in a maximum that is 100 newton here it is in a y direction stress that is what it is represented with in a red color line this is also zero and shear stress you are not applied any shear stress that's what it is started with in a zero okay so as i go on rotating this angle keeping this uh, force is same then this stress is goes on decreasing and somewhere at this particular 90 degree you can observe my here the normal stress becomes zero and also shear stress is going to become zero but y direction stress is going to be a maximum here so that is what it happens and we need to now identify which plane on which plane or what at what angle of theta my which type of stress is maximum whether it may be in a x direction stress or y direction stress which one is in a maximum so this is what it is called as in a transformation technique or this is what I mean, it is called as in a uh, also identification of principal stresses and principal planes okay principal stresses and principal planes principal plane is the plane where my normal stress is maximum now i can have on a one normal plane is here another normal plane in y direction it is here and here it is in a maximum shear stress it is coming to be in a 45 degree somewhere and that's the reason whenever you are going to apply in a tangential force you might have observed when we do in a utm uh, so you, that particular mild steel component is going to fail at 45 degree not at an exactly 90 uh, that is a zero degree reason that this is what it is a weaker into the uh, shear that's the reason it is going to fail so but in, so this is one case you can observe it similarly i may have on a case forces acting on both the planes this is an x direction force and this is my y direction one direction i am going to apply an tangential force another direction i am going to apply an compression force so here it is starts with an this is my positive 100 this is negative 100 this is compression so if you go on plotting it here also you can observe my shear stress is becoming an maximum somewhere and uh, then the, this is this both are going to follow the same one is compression one is uh, tensile and you can now identify this is what in a simple case i uh, told you so similar case similar cash fashion you can have an another one example where one amount is less 
both the direction we have in a same force here it is in a 100 and here it is in a 50 so if i reduce what will happen so same but here shear stress is going to reduce it so it is coming to be in a 75 something here and but uh, here it is in 100 newton and here it is uh, starting with a minus 50 like that it is going to happen so a similar case you can have on a biaxial both the direction force is the same so this is what the case you can uh, when you take an, uh, any component and uh, dip into the water so all the forces coming in all the direction this is what the case this is this forces will be negative here so this type of call is in a call type of in a case is called as a hydrostatic case where the stresses will be uh, forces are going to apply from all the direction that is what hydrostatic in this hydrostatic you can observe there is no variation in the stress in x direction shear stress there is no shear stress as of it is going to apply applicable the reason for this because the the both forces on both the directions are same and that is what there is no amount of shearing it is going to happen and uh, that's the reason we can get in a, this hydrostatic case and but your normal stress will be in a, uh, each and every plane the stress will be in a uniform and the same and uh, this is only shear stress this is what in a case for a uh, torsion if i apply the torque onto the component if i take in a bar and i am going to transmit only torque through it what will be the uh, how the uh, stresses are move, uh, changing as i am going to rotate the angle of orientation and that is what you can just see it here here the stress will be the normal stress will be the maximum at 45 degree but shear stress is zero here and then both the direction you can observe the stress will be the maximum here it is 90 degree you will get in a, again uh, uh, maximum shear stress this is what in a maximum shear stress so that's what when you are going to twist it any brittle material it is going to fail at uh, uh, this particular point but uh, not at uh, uh, 90 degree something the reason for this is what the plane in which it is going to fail so this is what the case you can just observe it so this is what in a typically uh, principal stresses and principal planes you can just do it and you can take in a principal determine a maximum principal stress maximum principal planes by these equations this is what in a maximum stress minimum stress this is plus and this is plus minus if i change it so i'll get both the things and this is what the angle at which i can determine it this these equations are simply determined so sigma x there is no one relation with it and sigma y we have an another relation and tau x y is third relation so i want to determine the sigma x variation where it will be in a maximum that is what in a typical principle of maxima of minima it is used so theta is varying parameter and uh, this is my sigma x it is going to vary in this fashion so what i can do i can i know the equation of this i can now take on a derivative of sigma x with respect to d theta and uh, i will equate it to the zero what does that mean so if i have on a maximum point here i will get on a slope equal slope is zero and this slope is zero at this location and it is not zero at this any other point and that is what the maximum and minima we can determine it the same is case for y also tau x y also so that is what the way we derive this equation sigma x sigma y and tau theta and tau x tau theta maximum angles and all this this relation we have already gone through in strength of material group i will not go on deriving this so when we look into this part it is we have done it for only 2d cases we have not done for 3d cases so in that case so when we are dealing with in a 3d case so obviously i need to now look into the all the 3d ways so obviously i have on a one block i will consider there will be an axial force in all the three directions this is my x direction stress this is my y direction stress this is my this is z direction and this is my y direction stress on the same way i can have on a uh, stress in horizontal direction vertical direction and that, that is what in a shearing stress will be there so whenever we are going to provide these symbols there is a typical rule that is applicable just i will show you one ppt where you can just look at here 
So when we are going to define a stress, sigma is nothing but a symbol. First axis represents in a plane on which you are going to apply and second uh, that may be an x, y if I write it then on x axis y direction I am going to apply the uh, force that becomes a tangential force. This is y, this is x means both the directions are same. My x plane is there and in that particular plane direction I am going to apply. That is what this is called as a normal stress or x direction stress. So this is my x plane, this is my y plane. The same way I can have on a, both the planes are same. This is x plane and uh, this is my uh, plane and I am going to apply the force into this direction. This becomes an x, x, x1. If I am going to apply the force perpendicular to this x plane or this is my y axis and this is my x axis, then this becomes an a sigma xy and this this is nothing but in a shear force that's what we change the symbol to the tau x plane in the direction of y so that is what an x plane y direction so if you observe one thing this is more one force if i'm going to apply the force similar amount of force you can be observed that is what an a card is in a tau x y which is equal to tau y x so this is what uh, any formula because it is going to create a reaction in other direction that is what the way it happens. So similar fashion you can just do into 2D cases this is uh, a plane in x this is x direction plane and uh, force is applied in x direction that is what it is called as a sigma axis okay or I can have a sigma x1 x here. Then this is the x plane applying the force in y direction, then it becomes in a uh, tau xy. Same is with this y also. This is my y plane applying the force in y direction, this becomes on a sigma y. And uh, this is y direction, y plane applying the force in x direction that will result into tau yx. So similar way you can go on changing orientation and so many things you can do it. That we done it in strength of metal, I will not go in more details of it. So same way we can now represent my stresses in three dimensions. So which we done it in two dimensions previously. The same way I can have an, a, this is my x plane. Okay. This is and but force is in z direction. This is z plane and tau x, xz, xy. Like this you can look at this, these things. So when we are going to do this, because this particular component is not moving at all, it is keeping, means it is not uh, changing its position, but it is going to deform something. So obviously that is what it is called as an equilibrium of it. And we need to formulate these equilibrium equations. I am not going to do this all formulation, how, what is its derivation or something. So what that indicating, so stress sigma x, uh, change in the stress with respect to x will result into x and y direction into this and this is what an a force. Actually stress, stress is nothing but a force upon area and that will be reversed into this and I am getting the derivative of this will result into my force. That is what it is the particular way you can look into, in, into this. This is for one direction, this is for second direction, this is for third direction, this is for x direction, this is for typically y direction, this is for z direction. Now this this is nothing but a plus, it is not uh, equal to, it is a plus. So when we are going to put this into an, a one block, okay, this is what a one block. So these equations will become like this. This is my sigma x, this is one equation, this is my second equation, this is my third equation. So this is what in one equation I will get. In x direction, similar fashion I will get in y direction and then same way I will get in z direction. That is what it happens it. So now I can put this equation in terms of an, a kind of an, a matrix or something and I want to relate it in a strain. And we assume that uh, stress and strain will have a uh, linear relationship. We are assuming that my uh, behavior of a particular component is in, within up to proportional limit only. I am not going beyond that. 
So that is what in a stress strain relation. This is what in a stress and these are the strain component. Then same way I can have a x direction strain, y direction and z direction, shear strain in three direction. So altogether I will get in a six variables here. Same way I will have in a six and other variables in stress. Okay. So this uh, to be related with an uh, y z and tau y x something like this. These two be related with each other and that is what it is called as a you know, strain displacement relationship or strain, uh, strain st stress strain relationship. So this is what in a typically strain re displacement relationship epsilon x epsilon y. So what this indicates if I take in a bar. I am going to apply the force in this direction. As I am going to apply the force, there will be a deformation in one direction. That is what I will say it is in a U x. The similarly, if I am uh, this force, this force due to this force, the strain will be in y direction also. That is what in a deformation I can have a U y. Or same way I can have in a U z also. So all these to be taken into account. And that is what it is clumped into this. So this is what in a major one, the direction in which you are going to apply the force. And half of this is nothing but in a, this relation. You can get in a derivation of it particular. That's what uh, epsilon x, epsilon y, these three relations. Same way I can get in a shear relations also. This is what in a shear relations. And these shear relations. Don't worry about these equations. These equations are typically used for... Uh, very high end of calculations as of now we don't need uh, but we should know how to know how what that equation means in initial phase of it so basically when we want to connect with a uh, stress and strain so that is what in uh, a hooks law generalized hooks law in generalized hooks law that x direction stress is connected with an uh, x direction strain by this d11 and that is what we done it in all uh, uh, UTM type of testing. Here I am going to apply the force, it is going to fix it. So stress is directly proportional to strain. It is assumed that the stress is in x direction, strain is in y direction. And we assume that E into epsilon x, sigma x. And this E is nothing but in a, this particular element. So if I put it into, so if I am going to apply the force in this direction, what will be the strain in this y direction or so this is x direction this is y direction this is my z direction so this all is to be done with this this might be another relation this is what an isotropy an isotropy material you can have so if i have on a material which is behaving in same fashion i can have an only uh, in all the direction that type of material is called as an isotropy so here I can have uh, this D parameters altogether D parameter it is a 6 by 6 altogether 36 material property you need to determine and that is what it is called as a typically linear elastic unisotropic material behavior and most of the time there are uh, symmetric matrix this part of matrix this part of matrix and this this part this particular part and this part both are the symmetric and that's what uh, that will be reduced to the only 21 material properties okay so that is what we need to just look into this and we need to solve for it and, uh, sir yeah both. sir your voice is breaking sometimes uh, not clear okay i think maybe network issue i think uh, so, uh, sir right now it's audible uh, is it audible now? Yes. Okay. So this is the way we should relate stress with a strain, and that is possible. Most of the time we'll get confused why these so many things are there in the x direction. See, uh, one important thing I'd like to include into this. This is what I'm. Uh, I'll just give it a. I will take one single slide and I will explain it. That will be better. If I take an, a component, so any 2D we will consider 2D because it is quite easily, 
visible. This is my x direction and this is my y direction. So whenever I am going to apply the force on x direction, this particular component is going to deform in this fashion. Okay, means it is going to have a deformation in u x direction as well as there is a deformation in y direction also. That is what I can have in a u y. So particular material whenever I am going to apply a force onto the material it is not only causing in a one direction deformation it is also causing in a deformation in y direction also causing a deformation in third direction also so that is also going to happen that is the y z so amount of force applied in one direction is causing the deformation in all the three directions this is one thing also it is going to change the shape of it maybe if I am going to apply the force on angular something so it is going to change the shape that is what we call as in a shear stress or I can have in a psi 1, psi x, psi y and psi z and that's what this is these are the deformation these are the shear deformations these are the anyway one single um, single stress or single force uh, is now connected with all this I can have in a ux, uy, uz, gamma x, gamma y, xy I can say it is y, uh, yz I can say, zx I can say like this. So that is what the way these three are related and uh, this deformation, what are the force is causing deformation in all the six ways and that is the relation it is called as a you know, stress strain relations. And we need to now know how if I am going to apply the fx amount of force, what will be my stresses in uh, deformation in x direction, maybe in a y direction. So there will be a some relation rate. So that relation is nothing but in these equations. So this is what in a simple relation and it is assumed to be in a linear rise. Most of the time these are uh, all non-linear stuff. But here it is uh, assumed to be in a linear eyes and that is what Hooke's law says so, okay. And that is for to connect this all, so we need an at least 21 material properties. That's what whenever you are going to use an answers, so it is going to show you. So you need to enter the x direction properties, y direction properties, even strain properties, so many things. So that is what it happens, right? okay. So, when we are going to exhibit in a relation, one more thing is, uh, when this is what in a symmetric I told you, so this is particular material is called as an orthotropic material and in this case we have to only define this is 6, 7, 8, 9 material properties, 9 material properties if I have an orthotropic material. If I am having an Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio in both the direction, uh, so the, all the three directions, so I can now relate with this uh, relation and I will get uh, equations for this. And I can now have an isotropic, uh, isotropy I am going to consider. Isotropy means if I am going to apply the force in one direction, this is my, this is 100 Newton I applied on one direction and uh, I got in a deformation of an x direction is at 5 mm same amount of I will remove this and I will apply the force in y direction of 100 Newton and I will get a deformation of 100 Newton. That is what an isotropy in all the direction it is showing in a uh, same kind of a behavior that is what it is going to happen that is what in a 5 mm deformation here it is going to show it in both the direction. This kind of a behavior is called as an isotropy. Iso means it is uniform in all the direction. And that is what it is related this uniformity within a Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio is nothing but a property of material. Whenever I am going to apply the force on one direction, it is going to show a deformation orthogonal to it, perpendicular. That is uh, uh, deformation it is going to happen. And that particular deformation is uh, depends on amount of Poisson's ratio. And that Poisson's ratio is typically uh, 0.2 to 0.5 value in most of the materials okay so this is what the way you can have an isotropic material property you can have an, uh, this e value you can observe everywhere you can find an e value is the same in all the x y z direction mu also is not going to change with respect to direction 
so that is what it is called as an isotropy but any of the material like you know, if you take a you know, wood wood is kind of a you know, material having a you know, multiple fibers in axial direction these are all axial direction if i am going to apply the force onto this wood it is taking more force in one direction if i apply the force in this part particular this is going to separate out the uh, fibers and it needs an a lesser amount of force to fail in this direction and uh, it will causing a more deformation in y direction compared to x direction often for the same amount of force so this is what it is called as the an isotropy and it is uh, uh, that's what we need to look into these equations okay so this is what a relation between material property that is modulus and rigid model rigid body modulus and this is what you, know, you can substitute you can construct on a stress strain relation because these relations we are going to somewhere use in uh, fea because ultimately you are going to determine after doing all the calculation you are coming with a deformation okay deformations and these deformations are further converted into strain and this strain is further converted into stress by considering material property and that's the reason we need all this that is the basically requirement of it so i think uh, we'll discuss uh, further parts in next sessions and today we'll stop it here because already we got in uh, 10 minutes late uh, for this uh, anyway thank you if you have any questions you can ask me now